But yeah, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll look at uh, uh, practical setting in natural language processing, and we'll look at <coughs> different structure prediction paths. So part speech tagging and then capture recognition parsing. And um, we already kind of set the stage. Mary did a good, very good job. Just to uh, put it in the, the framework that I um, would like to have for, for the talk, uh, the limitations <coughs> of supervised learning can be seen in two different ways. One is a mismatch domain where our um, target distribution is different. And um, as an example, in, uh, in parsing, um, our training data is typically newswire data, and there are very few questions. But when you try to apply parsers to web data, um, there are a lot of questions, and the parsers don't really know how to deal with those. And as Mary said, annotating uh, new data is expensive. So for example, for syntactic parsing, it's about a dollar per word uh, to annotate with these structures because you need linguists that have been specifically trained. So it's unrealistic <coughs> to expect to have label training data for all possible domains, and those change over time as well. But um, it is realistic to get partial annotations. So uh, even though you might not have much of a linguistic background, if I ask you what is the main verb of this question, you probably will be able to, to point out that manufacture is, is the main verb. And so we want to leverage those type of partial annotations to adapt to, to the domains. And then the other um, problem uh, with supervised learning is that the objective function that we optimize um, is oftentimes not exactly what we care. So this might be because we, um, the objective function doesn't decompose according to the model structure, or because we're using a model in a pipeline where we don't really care about the, the exact performance on that particular step, but we care about downstream um, application-specific performance. And so, um, and that's where actually this work arose from. We're working with a machine translation team, and they take sentences, parse them, and then change the word order before translating them. So this is a very simple way of incorporating syntax into machine translation, and typically results in better final translations. And so it doesn't really matter exactly what the parse we wants. As long as we get the right reordering, we're, we'll be fine. And so we'd like to feedback and either from the translation or from this reordering into the parse information about what the structure was that um, would have um, helped us with the task. So um, these extrinsic loss functions that we use um, will capture either of those two, two problems and will present a framework um, that, that can handle multiple uh, loss functions. And we'll just iterate over those in round problem fashion. And there's a little bit of theory, but I'll focus mostly on, mostly on empirical results. So uh, we'll use uh, the structure of perceptron uh, as our learner uh, because it's so simple and everybody's familiar with it. Um, just the one thing to, to emphasize, because we're looking at structure prediction here, uh, this hard max will um, involve dynamic programming and searching over a large exponential space. So um, it might actually be uh, quite involved. And so we iterate over examples. Um, and um, we have, for our intrinsic data, our labeled data, we'll have the target output as labeled by a linguist. Um, and so we'll iterate over those and adapt our parameters. But um, then we'll consider a scenario where we have additional extrinsic <coughs> data that um, has no overlap necessarily with the, with the intrinsic data, and where the output space uh, y prime is, is different. So it can be um, over these partial, partially annotated trees, or um, over this reordering data or machine translation data for these sentences. And we will just assume that we have a loss function that, given the model prediction, can compute the loss relative to the target uh, y prime that we have for that data point. And so um, these two spaces are, um, are different, but uh, we can still iterate over the intrinsic data and kind of get a warm start, get to a good point. And then we'll start mixing in the extrinsic data and um, <coughs> according to some scheme, uh, switch between the two. And we can include multiple loss functions in the extrinsic <coughs> data sets. So um, these um, 
extrinsic functions, as I said, will be targeted towards um, the task that we're looking at. So, um, to make this a little bit more explicit, when we go over the extrinsic data, we will, so if we assume a parsing task, what we'll do is we'll produce a list of possible candidates. And this list can be sampled just from the uh, output space. Or in practice, what tends to work better is a ranked k-best list of the outputs. And then we can compute the loss relative to y prime, this partially annotated or task-specific annotation. And then if the loss for something uh, further down the list is smaller than the loss for the top ranked item, we'll take a perceptron step in that direction. So it's a very simple uh, recipe style uh, approach uh, that um, works, works well in practice. And we can show that as long as at least <coughs> one of the um, items in this k-best approximation uh, forces us to do an update step and the data is uh, separable, we will converge um, to, um, to a separate line. So, um, okay. uh, to make, basically, because we work over the k-best um, output of our model, we don't need to pose any um, restrictions on the loss function. And we can use uh, blue score if you're working on machine precision. Uh, if you're optimizing uh, constituency parsers, we might use F measure, average precision, whatever loss you, you might care about. And um, as long as the loss function is easy to um, evaluate, uh, this will be fairly efficient. So <coughs> now okay, I'm happy to talk more about the, the related work during the post session. I uh, will probably hear something about uh, constraint driven learning, uh, the work of Ming Wei Chang and then last time Are we soon? Maybe my hands is not on. Sorry? I'm no. Not good. No? Okay. <laughs> well, it's related. <laughs> uh, so I can tell you about it if you want. Um, and Dave McCann's this last year, but it's, uh, his work on uh, direct loss minimization is also somewhat related, but we don't make assumptions about the loss function. So um, let's go into the empirical part. Uh, the first <coughs> task is domain adaptation. And as I said, our training data um, is Newswire, and actually um, in the 40,000 sentences that we have as training data, there are less than 1% questions. And um, so to make it hard, we'll test on a question tree bank where we only evaluate the main questions. And we'll consider the scenario where we have the main verb of the question has been given to us. And because we have for that little um, for that tree bank, we actually have the full trees. We'll also compare to using the full annotation. So um, the only thing that we'll get is for sentence like, where can I find good sushi? It's going to be that the word. So, uh, and part of speech tagging with a, just a standard CRF <coughs> model. <coughs> in domain performance, is about 96%. When we go to this question domain, uh, we drop to below 90%. And this is in part due to um, lots of unknown words um, that we haven't seen before. But also because the word order has <coughs> changed significantly from um, our input domain. And um, when we get this partial supervision uh, that what the verb is and iterate uh, doing one step on one percent on update on our label training data and one percent uh, one percent step on the um, partially annotated data, we can bump this up to ninety two percent roughly, closing halfway the gap to if we had the full annotation. Uh, in parsing, the numbers are actually more striking. So um, the root F1 <coughs> is how well are we able to determine what the main verb of the sentence is. And it drops down to less than 50%. Basically, the parser has no idea how to handle questions at the beginning. But if we give it about 2,000 examples of sentences where we have labeled the main verb, uh, we improve the root F1 to 83%. Um, compared to 91, what we would have uh, with four annotations. But we not only improve the root of one, because we go down the list uh, of our <coughs> candidate trees, we actually end up picking 
uh, very coherent trees and improve on all other metrics. So this is unlabeled accuracy score for each dependency arc, and this is a labeled accuracy score when we have type <coughs> um, So we get very substantial improvements. Now the second task uh, is going to be uh, task adaptation, where we want to do this machine translation example. Um, we won't look at the final um, output, because that seems to be a little bit too far removed from um, the parser. We'll look at uh, the, these reorderings, and those are fairly easy to generate for, for bilingual speakers. And we have a data set um, with about 5,000 of them that we'll use for, for this um, task. And um, so, yeah, we, we ask people to annotate them uh, for a task from, for translating English into Japanese. <coughs> English is a subject for object language. Japanese is a subject object verb language, so the verb typically needs to move to the end, and there's some local reordering that needs to happen as well. And we'll use as a loss function uh, something based on this reordering score, which looks at how many chunks um, are aligned um, correctly, have been moved in the right place. And the last thing, one minus this word. So, so um, looking at how well we can match the exact uh, reordering and also the soft reordering score, we see that our baseline model, um, blue one, improves quite significantly. And we, we show how uh, doing more and more of these uh, loss updates in that direction um, improve. At some point, it starts dropping, unfortunately. And then uh, you might say, well, how much do we care about the ordering score? Don't so we care about final machine translation output? And we have experiments with blue scores and human uh, evaluations where we show that um, there's more than a blue point improvement and uh, very strong uh, subjective improvements. So even though, in looking at the parse trees, and evaluating them on a parsing benchmark, they tend to either stay flat or actually get worse on the parsing benchmark, because that's from a very different domain. But for this task, um, the parse trees start So before I finish, uh, one one plug. Um, and um, so basically Google and the LBC got together, and we've created a new web tree bank, um, which is not big enough for training. But uh, it should be interest, an interesting data set for uh, testing. So we have five domains. For each of those domains, we have 2,000 labeled sentences, and then more than 100,000 unlabeled sentences that can be used to do uh, unsupervised adaptation. And we're organizing a shared task. So if there are no people here and interested in participating, uh, I would encourage you. So yeah, to conclude. Uh, we talked about the uh, augmented loss structured perception, which is a simple way to utilize partially annotated data and adapt for specific tasks or for new things. Um, happy to take questions. So this kind of, I guess this puts you on the spot a little bit, but one thing that, you know, I was hearing the morning talks and then hearing this one, and it seems like, you know, you also mentioned, so when, when you see like bounds, like the one that Maria is showing, like these, these uh, basically say, well, either uh, your loss is the same, or in the case where the distribution still share support, like I have a, a new word, they don't really know kind of where that word should attach in an English sentence. Um, what, you know, we, we kind of uh, don't really know what to do there, right? You might get lucky with some of these heuristics, but in general, like, we don't have any great ideas. And then, I mean, I guess, like, do you have any, um, do you have any feeling about uh, whether uh, the augmented loss uh, or these kind of different loss function style feedback how that applies to uh, particular types of features or whether certain types of losses that you feel like, oh, I can, I can correct this mistake, but you know, um, these other mistakes, these other types of things I, I already knew well from my source domain, and I don't need to kind of focus on these, these particular, I guess, attachment decisions in the cars anymore. Yeah, well, I mean, I think it's, 
it's hard to, for me at least, to speak on a general that kind of level. I think it depends a lot on the application. Mm -hmm. I think that kind of one of the different, the main difference that I see here is this is a, a much easier setup because we have feedback. We don't um, have to just talk about distributions. We're getting explicit feedback. Well, this is kind of you did it wrong here, and we don't know what the best output is, but we're getting kind of like reinforcement feedback of like, okay, this one is better. We should try to predict more like these, and so. Um, if the notation targets exactly the errors that matter, you're you're getting like kind of you're handing the problem off to the to the human to solve for you rather than uh, to the machine by estimating the error. So, and that makes it very kind of makes the task easier. And <coughs> in a practical setting, especially in Google, where we can get user feedback, um, it seems like a good way to kind of sidestep the problem. This is really nice. I wonder about your experimental results or network of questions. Yeah. It's possible to uh, heuristically take sentences, convert them, or take question, convert them to questions, and then files. Yeah. What would you get with the baseline? Mm -hmm. So I don't have the exact numbers, but that's the first approach we took. Uh, before we knew about this question tree bank, that's what we were doing. We took the uh, declarative sentences and tried to turn them into questions. Um, having proper questions, um, that's better because the heuristics that you write to convert the, the questions don't always result in perfect questions. Um, I guess we should go back and compare, but it, like, we, we abandoned that approach because this is not going to work. So do better. Okay, just sounds good.